Hey, it's Ian here. I've got something special for everyone today. How about an indigo snake adventure? In 2008, the Orient Society was founded as a non-profit organization with the purpose of saving the eastern indigo snake and its habitat from extinction. By preserving longleaf pine ecosystems, other endangered animals like eastern diamondback rattlesnakes and gopher tortoises can thrive and provide both food and shelter for indigo snakes. Indigo seek gopher tortoise burrows in their winter breeding season from October to February and can still remain active at temperatures around 50 to 60 degrees when it's still too cool for other snakes. It's during this time when the Orient Society organizes their Indigo Days events where 40 or so members are invited to help survey for indigos under their licenses and permits. Follow the Orient Society on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and look for trip registration announcements and be prepared to pounce as trip slots fill up quickly. Eastern indigo snakes were listed on the Endangered Species Act in the 1970s and their population has continued to decline. Locally extinct from Mississippi and Alabama, they primarily exist in southeast Georgia and peninsular Florida with a few on the panhandle. So I wouldn't normally seek out animals with state and federal protections, but to survey for them legally with indigo experts is lifetime hurt bucket list material. Over 40 members converged on the Orien Indigo Snake Preserve on a chilly December morning. After initial orientation and a quick review of safety procedures and protocol, we split into three groups, loaded up into cars, and drove off to different properties for a full day of field herping. One way to look for indigos in winter begins with finding a gopher tortoise burrow. You survey the sandy apron outside the burrow opening for snake tracks, look for shed snake skins, and look into the burrow for a berm, which is a pile of sand created by a large-bodied snake crawling out of the burrow. If you can determine the direction of the snake tracks to be out of the burrow, then survey outwards in a spiral. Otherwise, you move on to the next burrow and repeat the process. Sounds simple and easy, right? Our day picked up when the Orient Society's Matt Moore found the first indigo snake in our group. Here we go. We got the gopher tortoise burrow here. No yep. doubt it's probably found here. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> male or female? Uh, it's male. It's got a That's finer insane. array. That's insane. Maybe a combat Yeah, because one of them is open. It looks like two, look, two rows of... Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's the where's the yeah. tracks, yeah. Matt? No, uh, we. I was looking... That, there's that, and then there's that. So um, he may have gone in and that may be an exit again. He may have been in and out of this burn. That's, that's very likely, Ben. I think you're right. Um, was there a burn in there? Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah! Where's yes. the boring? Now we're, 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 we're the other shirts that have That is so yeah. we're all We're all, all we're even. All even. <laughs> is this data collection, pit tagging, all that right here in the field? Yeah. Yep, right here. Hot damn. Yeah, so. Typically, when we don't have an audience, we can get this done in 15, 20 minutes. Snakes, very little stress. We get it back in the burrow, he can continue on his day. Okay. The Orion Society gathered morphometric data on captured snakes, sampled for disease, and if the animal was not already pit tagged, it was given one to aid identification on recapture in the future. See the video link for field notes with Ben Staganga, Snake Fungal Disease Project, for a great demonstration of this process. Seven? Seven? He'll be under that. We want, we want some extra. I, I, no, no, no. I love that he starts with seven. It, that just excites me. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's nice. Stretch out this ruler to eight and a half and look at that and realize that's the record for a metal indigo. It'll blow your mind. Yeah, dude. That's nine. So, yeah, right where his thumb is, that is the record male indigo. That's nine. I'm gloving him up. Oh, give me a vent length. Give me a vent. Vent's right at five feet. Five feet? Give me centimeters. Uh, 152. Point? And a half. 27.8 tail length. And that's typical of the indigos. They, they kind of puff at you a little bit. They'll vertically flatten their necks. Um, they have a whole array of kind of defense tactics. They'll even play dead sometimes. Very rarely bite. But that, does sometimes happen. 
definitely push on it a little bit. Um, we definitely want to pick up as much particulate as possible. Um, go ahead and get all over. And we, we want to swab the eyes, the nostrils, um, the mouth, edge of the mouth, because those are typically the hot spots where SFD symptoms manifest, any, any body opening. So. The staff also set a great example on raising awareness of snake fungal disease and basic sterilization practices to limit its spread. Rubber gloves were used by some and hand sanitizer was readily available for both hands and snake hooks. Um, so that's good. You can put that in that vial Thank you. and then break it. Break it. Um, just the vent? Yeah, just get the vent really good. And the vent's another spot we see a lot of crust and sores. And then you can note that there are bite marks on the back of his neck on the right side, but I'm pretty sure that's combat bites. Typically we pit tag in the first foot on the right side of the snake, just above the vent. A little microchip that's just injected into the skin. It doesn't appear that he has any tags. So this is a new snake that we've never seen before. Oh, this is cool. cool. This is just over <laughs> two kilograms. We do want to sanitize the site with alcohol. And then afterwards we'll put an um, antibacterial liquid band-aid on it just to seal it up. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so we just give that about 60, 30, 60 seconds to dry. And he is uh -oh. trying to get it. This is the first indigo for how many people? Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Awesome. 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 Very nice. A lot of hands. I'm glad we were able to get Yeah, I was, was going to get heckled. <laughs> 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 it would have been a few of us, weren't you? It would have been two indigo days in a row that my group was the only one that could get an indigo. <laughs> 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 Wait, they didn't tell us that this morning before they said go with that. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> I got the only diamond back last year, so um, I redeemed up myself for it. a little bit. <laughs> Samples, sample date. Okay. Uh, Say damage skills. Um, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Turn this way a little bit. No, no, the other way. Other way. There you go. There you go. Oh, way. I know. I almost put the picture right here. Oh, they're nice. awesome. Thanks for letting us get photos. Yeah. That's super nice. Photograph this. I'm gonna pose it for a shot or two. Um, I'm not gonna over, do overkill. Freaking awesome. Just see, dude, they sit. So Sometimes cool. they sit pretty good right off the bat. Time for some combative photography. Let's throw some elbows, guys. <laughs> Everybody good? Yep. An eastern diamondback rattlesnake was spotted basking outside of a gopher tortoise burrow, but got spooked and went right back down the hole. Bomber dude. I could bump him with the hook, but I think that's about all. Keep digging. <laughs> Bring your shovel. <laughs> right, I can fit. <laughs> We're real Put Matt at the center. Indigo snakes have more going on for them than just being rare and endangered. The species named dry march on is composed of the Greek words drymos, meaning forest, and Archon, meaning Lord, which translates to Lord of the Forest. I think it's interesting that sexual dimorphism tends to favor the females being the largest in most snakes, but I'm learning that there are exceptions like indigos and rat snakes where the males can be larger than the females. Indigos feed on a variety of prey, including the largest venomous snake in North America, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake, and they're mostly immune to their venom. 
Many large non-venomous snakes are constrictors that coil and squeeze, but the indigo snake uses its muscular jaws to crush and overpower its prey. They are sometimes known to kill prey by violently beating it against the ground or nearby objects. Anything that fits in their mouth that they can bite and crush, they will eat. A longtime Orian member and volunteer, Rob Ritchie found the second indigo snake in my group. That's really cool, but I don't know if I'm on here. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Great find, man. Generally, indigo snakes have large, smooth scales, however, adult males have a few rows of lightly keeled or ridged scales running down the center of their backs. This is really cool because it means you can sex the shed skins, which is not something you can do with most snakes. This happens to be the shed of an adult female indigo snake, so it lacks these features. So, flip his tail up a little bit. One thirty-eight nose to vent, and then twenty-four vent to tail. Yeah, and there's a definite bite scar here on the side. There's several scars. Give each one of these snakes a name. This one's gonna be instead of Gracie, it's gonna be Grassy. Grassy. No. So I wouldn't have complained if she'd been named after me. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> So with everyone separated into three groups, you're only seeing one third of the action in this video. Right now it's only a $35 per year minimum donation to become eligible for members only trips with additional donation tiers and benefits available. Another indigo snake shed. Uh, this looks like another female, so two sheds, pretty cool. If you want to see more on surveying for indigos, see Field Notes with Ben Stagenga on the Orient Society's YouTube page. I'll put a link at the end of this video. Thanks, man. At the end of the last day, we gathered to admire an indigo and pine snake found by Noah Fields and another group that had been bagged for tagging and data collection. Thanks, Noah. Partial peels. They're hard to see, they're faint. 
variation in the degree of orange or reddish color on their chins. Some of them have a, a good deal, have a great deal of it. Some of them have none, and it's a creamy white, almost like a racer. So we're going to release him shortly. He's awesome. <laughs> 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 It was a great pleasure to watch such an ethical and enthusiastic group fan out over miles of land, peering under every rock and log and into every crevice and burrow. A real army of citizen scientists from all kinds of backgrounds. Thanks to the Orient Society, their friendly staff, and to the other members that helped on this survey, I really appreciate swapping stories in the field with everyone. Thanks for watching.